Hi, I'm Jessica Hansen and I am in San Francisco. I'm here to talk to you about Disneyland, so I've got to introduce you to this guy. This is Walt Disney and it's July 18th, 1955. It's also probably the worst day of his entire life. He just opened a brand new theme park in Anaheim and he's reading the morning headlines, one of which says, Walt's dream, a nightmare. The Associated Press said that perhaps for the first time in his entire career, Walt has disappointed thousands of youngsters. So our story begins less with a once upon a time and more with a, oh, how did we get here? It all began when Walt took his daughters to a typical amusement park of the day. Dirty, dingy, disorganized with nothing for parents. And he thought, why not create something magical? something that fills children with wonder and their parents with nostalgia. It took him 20 years to get an investor on board. Uh, and then he had one year and one day to turn over 160 acres of orange groves into the most magical place on earth. His crew worked around the clock, but the park was not ready on opening day. That did not keep people from lining up at 2 a.m. The Santa Ana freeway backed up for seven miles and the invitation only passes were so easy to forge that while 11,000 people were invited, almost 30,000 people descended onto the park. It didn't help that a guy out back was charging people $5 to climb his ladder to scale the fence. Once inside, the asphalt of Main Street had just been poured at 6.30 a.m. and it had not set under the baking sun. So guests were forced to abandon their stuck shoes and carry on Cinderella style barefoot. Then there was a massive gas leak near Sleeping Beauty's castle, which erupted into flames, meaning half the park had to be evacuated. Rides like Mark Twain's riverboat were falling apart. Literally pieces of it fell and hit a senator in the head. The boat nearly sank and then it almost capsized. Parts of the park like Tomorrowland were so unfinished that in desperation, Walt asked companies to use it to advertise their future products. That meant instead of a functioning rocket simulator to the moon, kids instead got Crane's Toilet of Tomorrow. Only 18 rides had been deemed ready for opening day, but of those, half broke almost immediately, and the other half were dealing with massive power outages. So the lines for the few functioning rides were hours long. People started to hijack ride vehicles from each other climb over fencing and scale the castle walls. An employee said, I've always wondered how no one got killed. Tempers flared as temperature soared between 100 and 110 degrees. And the park offered little shade and no water. A plumber strike had meant that the crew had to choose between functioning toilets or functioning water fountains, to which Walt had famously said, they can buy Pepsi Cola, but they can't pee in the streets. But unfortunately, with three times the expected number of guests, the vendors ran out of food and drink very quickly, leaving people gasping for water at first aid. The whole thing was televised as, as well. It was the largest live broadcast in history at the time. 70 million people tuned in, almost half the U.S. population, and it was a train wreck. The hosts were described as underprepared and unrehearsed, and one of them was caught on camera kissing a Disney dancing girl that was definitely not his wife. The press called opening day Black Sunday, and they predicted a very quick demise for the park. When asked when Disneyland would be complete, given the non-functioning rides and water fountains, Disney famously said, Disneyland will never be complete. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. And he was right. 60 some odd years later, on my most recent visit to Disneyland, I was full of wonder as the head of PR would say things like, fun fact, every plant in Tomorrowland is edible. Fun fact, Doritos were invented in Disneyland as a way to repurpose stale tortilla chips. Fun fact, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride has real human remains in it. So I'd like to raise a glass to perhaps the most fun fact of them all, that Disneyland not only survived its dumpster fire of a disastrous opening day, but it's now welcomed over 750 million visitors, the largest cumulative attendance of any theme park in the world, and it is perhaps the happiest place on earth to many of them. So cheers.